Good day, subscribers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am Jeremy. This is the Financial Education Channel, and today we're doing a little would I hire or would I fire with Apple CEO Tim Cook. This is one of my favorite new video series I have going. This is my second episode I've ever done on this. It's not really like a weekly series. It's just like a, a time to time, you know, I might do a video on this whenever I feel like talking about a certain CEO of a certain company. And would I hire them or would I fire them? We'll look at the good they've done. We'll look at the bad they've done as CEO. And today we're doing Tim Cook. I mean, that guy had huge shoes to fill. Steve Jobs probably the biggest business legend of maybe history, maybe possibly the biggest, you know, business legend of history. And he had to fill his shoes. Imagine doing that. That's like insanely hard thing to do, guys. So we're going to talk about him today. We're going to kind of go through all this, um, you know, with you guys and we'll see. Would I hire him or would I fire him? And last thing, why am I even doing this new series? Why did I even start this? It's very important when you're investing in companies, especially when you're long-term investing, you also think about the management that's running that company. And is that management team competent? Do they make good decisions? Those kinds of things, guys. It's very important because I've been with some of my most successful investments ever. The management teams were really freaking good on those, those, those stocks. And some of the worst investments ever I made... Uh, this, the management teams were like has-beens. They had no clue what they're doing. <laughs> GoPro, <laughs> excuse me. So that's important to know, guys. So let's go ahead and get into this. So this was the day Tim Cook became CEO of Apple. Tim Cook named CEO and Jobs elected chairman of the board. We know, unfortunately, soon afterward, uh, Steve Jobs actually passed away, but he was already super sick, and that's when he gave up the CEO title to Mr. Tim Cook. And Tim Cook took over at that point. This was on August 24th, 2011, this happened, guys. So, once again, huge shoes to fill for Tim Cook. Holy smokes, imagine trying to take the place of a legend like Steve Jobs. Oh my goodness. So let's look at how the stock has done. Let's just look at the stock price for a second here. So since uh, Tim Cook took CEO rollover, he's the stock is up over 140%, guys. I took this stock chart from August 24, 2011, all the way until today, which is February, I think, 7th or February 8th, 2017. So a little over five years. And look at that stock. I mean, it's a fabulous stock up over 140%. That's really freaking good for any stock to be up that amount, you know, in a five, six year period. But the fact that Apple is such a humongous company already when Tim Cook was taken over, I mean, Apple was already over a $300 billion market cap when Tim Cook took it over. It was already one of the biggest companies in the world. So when Tim Cook took over that company, it was a monster company. So to get a stock price to go up that much when you're that big of a company, that is certainly an accomplishment and is nothing to sneeze at. That's very hard to do, guys. That's very freaking hard to do. You got to do a lot of things right. So let's go ahead and look at some of those things he's done right. So Right here, we have basically all the financial data from Tim Cook's five years as, as CEO so far, all starting all the way on your right-hand column, which was 2012, which was a year, you know, he really took over the company and started, you know, making decisions on his own, all the way up until 2016, which was last year's closed-out year. $156 billion he did in revenue in 2012, the first year he had taken over, all the way up to $215 billion last year. So very impressive there. And look at, then we'll go down to the next category there, uh, earnings per share. Earnings per share uh, back in 2012 was $6.38. Now, it, last year it was over $8.35. So once again, very, very impressive on the EPS. So they they're, have way more revenue than when he took over as CEO. They have way more earnings per share than when he took over as CEO. And then look at dividends. The next category down there, dividends. They were paying out only $0.38 cents per share in 2012. Nowadays, they pay out $2.18. And that number keeps rising, keeps rising. So very impressive on the dividend front. Then look at total cash and cash equivalents, marketable securities. Uh, $121 billion they had in 2012, which was freaking amazing that they had that much. Now Apple has over $237 billion in cash at the end of 2016. And then uh, now a couple more lines down there, you'll see total term debt. Back in Steve Jobs era, they did not like debt. Steve Jobs did not like taking out debt for anything, basically. But look at now, almost $79 billion in debt. 
Now, why did Apple even take out that debt, guys? You might wonder, because they have plenty of cash on the balance sheet. Look at all that cash. It's ridiculous. Why would you even need to take out debt? Apple took out debt because interest rates are insanely low right now. And they also felt the company's stock was undervalued. So they figured, let's let's borrow as much money as possible at these super low interest rates that will pay off over time, and let's go ahead and buy back the stock. It will give us a lot better return on investment because, I mean, Apple, with that debt, they're taking out like, they're, they only have to pay that debt back at like 2% or something insane like that, guys. So Apple just has to think, can we get better than a 2% gain on our stock? If yes, buy back the stock. If no, then don't buy back the stock. So Apple took the position that, hell yeah, we're going to gain a lot more than 2% on our return on investment. So why not take out debt and keep the cash on the balance sheet? You don't have to pay taxes on that. And let's just go back and start buying back stock. So it's really up to your opinion. Now, of course, if Apple ever comes into some hard times, becomes a lot less profitable, that debt could add up and could be a bad thing. But for right now, it's nothing out there. You know, Apple's as profitable as ever, just making money hand over fist. So, okay, guys. So next up, let's go ahead and look at iPhones. iPhones is the main product category for, for Apple. They sold 72 million iPhones the year uh, uh, Tim Cook took over as CEO. That's a, lot of, that's a lot of dang iPhones, 72 million. But let's look at just this last quarter, guys. The last quarter alone, Apple just reported last week, they did over 78 Bill, or excuse me, 78 million iPhone units in that Q1 2017 alone. So Apple sold more iPhones in the last quarter than they did in the entire year. Tim Cook took over as CEO. So that just shows you how much that business has expanded and the, the levels Tim Cook has taken that, that iPhone business to, guys. It is absolutely unbelievable. So for that, Tim Cook gets a big, you know, two thumbs up. That is absolutely amazing, guys. So let's look at a couple, a couple other things here, guys. So um, next up, uh, the you know, the iPad, that's kind of a bad thing. You know, iPads have been shrinking for years and Tim Cook has not been able to get that that under control. So that's kind of a bad thing. And Macs really have not grown the way you would think. So that's kind of a bad thing uh, for Tim Cook as well. Services, however, has grown enormously. Services was basically an, a non-existent business for Apple when Tim Cook uh, became CEO of the company. And now it's going to bring, and now in the last quarter alone, it brought over $7 billion in. And that's, that's on its way. A lot of people are expecting that to be a $30, $40 billion business within two years, guys. Within two years, a lot of people are expecting that to be a 30 to $40 billion business per year. And services is about as profitable as Apple can get. So that is absolutely amazing. And Cook deserves a big, big, you know, uh, standing ovation for the way he has brought up services and how profitable that business is and how he's expanded it and diversified. So, so Apple becomes not just an iPhone story, which is what it really is now, to becoming an iPhone and services story. So that is a big plus for Tim Cook there. Now, this really has nothing to do with stock price. This has nothing to do with anything, but I thought it was important to point out, guys. This was the day in 2014 when Tim Cook came out and said he was gay. For years, I've been open with many people about my sexual orientation. Plenty of colleagues at Apple know I'm gay, and it doesn't seem to make a difference in the way they treat me. Of course, I've had a good fortune to work at a company that loves creativity and innovation and knows it can only flourish when people embrace people's differences. Not everyone is so lucky. While I've never denied my sexuality, I haven't publicly acknowledged it either until now. So let me be clear. I'm proud to be gay, and I consider being gay among the greatest gifts God has given me. So, once again, this has nothing to really to do with Apple's stock price or anything. I just think it's a really great moment that Tim Cook came out. I mean, if he was always gay, you know, to come out like that and kind of break down the barriers and be the CEO, the most powerful, the most important, the most profitable, the biggest company in the world. That kind of, that's a big day for the lesbian and gay community because it just kind of shows that anything is possible, guys. And I'm, I'm huge on anytime a race, a gender, a sexual orientation can break down a barrier and do something that has never been done before. And I don't, or at least there's never been in recorded history that a CEO of any huge company, especially the biggest company in the world, was gay, guys. So this is, it's a big moment. And I thought that's just important to point out that 
I thought it's just a cool thing to point out. It has nothing to do with financial performance or anything. <laughs> I just wanted to point that out, guys. Okay, so let's look at some of the bad here, guys, with uh, Tim Cook. We looked at a few things already. So number one, Apple is getting the majority of its money from iPhone, iPad, and the Macs. They're, that's where they're getting the majority of the money. They're getting 90 plus percent of their revenue and their profits from the Mac, from the iPhone, from iPad. The problem with that is, guys, those are all product categories that Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs is the one who, you know, brought that to the company. So these are not Tim Cook's products. These are Steve Jobs products. Now, Tim Cook has built on those products and, you know, they've innovated and made them better and better and better and better over time. But regardless, you cannot deny the fact that over 90% of, re of Apple's revenue is coming from old products that basically Steve Jobs created their original products for, the iPhones, the iPads, the Macs. So that's very important to, that, to point out there in that, you know, unless Cook can really get the services going, then, then maybe they can kind of diversify away from just those old Steve Jobs products and build his new category, which he's built very nice, which is the services. Now, the, he's also coming out with the Apple Watch. The Apple Watch has not really put up those gangbuster numbers that you might expect from a new Apple product yet. So that's just kind of something to look at there and, and say, is that going to be a big product category in the future or is that just um, another product, guys? So that's something to pay attention to. Also, the earbuds, which they launched this past year, are those going to be something that can really diversify Apple's revenue in a big way? So the jury's still out on the Apple Watch. The jury's still out on the EarPods because, you know, the Apple Watch has been out only a little over a year. Earbo the EarPod things, they just came out this past year. or well, actually within the last couple months. So the jury's still out on those products. But can those products really diversify in any type of meaningful way the revenue away from those old Steve Jobs products, iPhone, iPad, Mac? And get them more to these new, you know, Tim Cook type products, app, and the new Apple Watch, the earbuds, all those kinds of things, guys. So, would I hire, would I fire Tim Cook? I would absolutely hire Tim Cook. He's done a really phenomenal job filling in probably the hardest position you would want to fill into. I mean, to that's like trying to take over for Tom Brady as the quarterback of the Patriots. I mean, could you imagine a thing harder than that? Taking over for Steve Jobs, an absolute business legend, guys. And he's done a phenomenal job. The revenues, the profitability, the dividends, the 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 growth in, in other countries, the growth in the in the old product lines, the innovation, the things he's done have been absolutely fabulous. Now, will he be able to diversify? Like we said, jury's still out on that, guys. So it'll be fun to see over time how he does. But right now, I would say he's done a hell of a job in the last five five and a half years since he became CEO, guys. Dang good job by Tim Cook. Bravo to you. I would hire you in a heartbeat to run my company. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this today. Leave me in that comment section if you guys have a CEO you'd love for me to break down. Try to pick a bigger type company that people would probably know because if it's some super small company, unless it's like a CEO that's just absolutely amazing, I'm probably not going to break them down, guys. But leave me a comment what CEO you would love to see me break down if there is one. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoy this video or these videos in general. And if you have just came across this, you're not subscribed yet, you may want to. We talk personal finance in the channel. We talk entrepreneurship on the channel. And we talk the stock market the most in the channel out of everything, including this new series I do every couple weeks. Thank you for watching, guys, and have a great day.